Idaho Supreme Court is deciding how a proposed ballot initiative should be described to voters. Justices hearing arguments from an attorney representing the group and the attorney generals tasked with writing the ballot description. CBS 2's Angela Kerndall is live in the control room to explain more about what this all means and also what's next with it. If the Idahoans for Open Primaries initiative makes it on the ballot, voters would get to decide if they want to get rid of Idaho's closed primary elections and instead have a primary where all candidates, regardless of their party, run together. All voters would vote in that primary no matter which party they're affiliated with. The top four candidates would move to the general election, which would become a ranked choice voting system. Voters could choose their favorite candidates and rank uh, the next three. Um, for the, or rank the next three according to their preferences. Those who support the open primary initiative can't continue collecting signatures until this issue over ballot titles is resolved. Attorney General Raul Labrador's office assigned the proposed ballot initiative a short title and description at the end of June. Idahoans for open primaries and Reclaim Idaho have since filed a challenge to his titles, arguing they're deceptive and should be repealed and replaced by the court. Labrador doesn't use the term open primary at all, but instead uses the term non-party blanket primary. In the title, he describes the initiative as, quote, measure to one, replace voter selection of party nominees with non-party blanket primary, two, require ranked choice voting for general elections. Deborah Ferguson, representing Reclaim Idaho and Idahoans for open primaries, argues the term non-blanket primary isn't an accurate description. I think what's important is that it, the, the voters know this is an open primary, that it isn't controlled by any either of the parties, it is run by election officials. It's open to all comers. And that the initiative doesn't require ranked choice voting. A statement that is patently false because that is optional. They can select simply one candidate if that's their, their preference. She also argued the attorney general's duty is to be an objective and impartial officer in his role of handling ballot titles. She points to a recent tweet in which Labrador says, quote, Let's defeat these bad ideas coming from liberal outside groups. She said the tweet should disqualify him from handling the ballot titles in this specific case. The attorney general has made, um, uh, expressed his desire um, to uh, destroy, what was the word, destroy the initiative and also threaten to sue the petitioners when it makes it to the ballot. And I so, so you're seeing there a demonstration of animus and bias. So it would probably not be the right case to say we're going to give uh, deference. Solicitor General Thea Wald, representing Labrador, argues the titles as they are are accurate and neutral. Idaho used to have an open primary, but the system proposed here is distinctly different. He also argues Labrador's tweet was about ranked choice voting in general and not this ballot initiative in particular. He said justices should look at Labrador's ballot description alone. One justice wondered if describing the initiative as a top four open primary with ranked choice voting in the general election could work. Ferguson said she thought it would. The initiative backers are also asking justices to consider whether the group should be allowed more time to collect signatures as this battle over ballot descriptions has, as they say, cost them uh, several weeks of time they'd otherwise be um, able to do that. Chief Justice Bevin said they'll issue a decision at a later date but did not give a timeline for that. In the control room, Angela Kerndall, CBS 2 News.